The Dark Side of the Street. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. If you watched Sesame Street in the 1970s throughout the 1980s, you're probably familiar with who was running Mr. Hooper's store, David Robinson. What you may not be familiar with is the turbulent and tragic life of the actor behind the lovable shopkeeper. This is the story of Northern Calloway. I watched Sesame Street. Oh, yeah. I'm old. So I watched Sesame Street 1970s, early 80s is my prime time. Absolutely. And it still goes on. I mean, it's so, it's as relevant as SNL is to our cultural landscape. It keeps going. It evolves. I remember watching it. I remember the interstitials. The Even the Muppets are so iconic. Like, it's so American of us to watch Sesame Street. And now looking back on it, I don't want to make this about the culture war or anything like that, but Sesame Street was really diverse Mm -hmm. early on. Absolutely. And as I'm just speaking as someone who watched it, who had no information in my mind about who was represented and not represented, It just seemed normal to me. I didn't look and be like, wait, there's a disproportionate amount of white people to black people to Latino to anything else, because at least in my world, that's East Coast. It's where I just, there was a mix of people Mm -hmm. and never thought much of it. And it's interesting to look back and make it about like, wow, how progressive was that in the early 1970s kind of showcasing in a way, uh, lower middle class living, middle class living neighborhoods and an interesting mix of people mm-hmm. where now it's you know it, as time has gone on we're like well can we show that mm-hmm. in you know 2019 2021 2015 1985 yeah and, and you know you can can you show this can you not show that it's kind of meant to be for children mm-hmm. and educational and not really in front of the status quo as far as adults who have opinions and their heads filled with something like, wait a minute, why are we, sh- why are we showcasing this? You know, yeah. why is this used to represent? I only want my children to see blank. And yeah. for me, just as a kid growing up, it's something I look back and be like, yeah, I never really, you know, not that I'm a hero or anything like that, but mm-hmm. I just never noticed it. I yeah. Never, my head was never filled with anything to notice it. Absolutely. Well, I also remember watching it in, you know, the nineties and, and thinking, back at other shows and how whitewashed they were in comparison. Talk about it being super progressive in a time where people didn't really have that on their minds, especially with children's programming and how it still goes on. It still is. So Sesame Street is iconic, important. Mm -hmm. There's a very large cast Mm -hmm. of people over the years. I'm kind of looking at like the early 1970s, I suppose late 1960s, I think when it started. The 1980s is that classic time because a lot of things are pulled from that. There's not a lot of like new characters that are represented in media in some way. Exactly. You know, there's no, there's not like a newer Big Bird. True. It's not a new Oscar the Grouch. No, no, no. But there are new characters now. Like yes. there's an autistic girl, like we said before. It's it's ever evolving, even though it has that kind of foundational cast of characters. You're listening to Ghost Town. There's going to be a dark side to it. Yes. And I spent for some reason, a lot of time going back and looking at Sesame Street from a production point of view and, mm-hmm. and how what it was and what it represented, because I have had, had a need to watch it in mm-hmm. a very long time. I guess if I was sitting around watching Sesame Street alone in the dark, you'd yeah. be like, what is happening? Like, grown-ass man. No, no, you know, no judgment if you yeah. that's what you want to do. But I you know, look back with, with hindsight and information, and you realize it's still a, a certain time. It's still human beings that are working in, in entertainment mm-hmm. and different personalities and, and and it doesn't always work out the person you see growing up that's in a way helping educate you mm-hmm. as somebody who is a little bit of a, a latchkey kid a little bit and they have their own demons and they have their own issues and i came upon the actor northern calloway i was actually looking up another thing about an episode that was banned the oh. banned sesame street episode and i love that <laughs> so we'll talk about that maybe in another episode but it, I found the actor Northern Calloway, and I looked him up. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember this guy. He was mm-hmm. a really important guy. He was there from yeah. s- season two up and through ni- the late 1980s. So he was a-, a huge a huge staple in it. Northern Calloway was an American actor and singer, best known for his role as David Robinson on Sesame Street from 1971 to 1989. Long run. It's a good run. The 50th anniversary of the show came around in 2019, but unfortunately, some of the original stars didn't live 
to see the day. Northern Calloway was one of them. Uh. Northern James Calloway was born on September 10th, 1948 in New York. He graduated from New York City's High School of the Performing Arts. Yeah. Fame. Fame, fame. It's a fame, fame. In 1966 and joined the Lincoln Center Repertory Company just two days later. Northern performed in A Midsummer Night's Dream and The Three Musketeers at the Stratford Festival in 1968. He also played the lead in the new Federal Theater production of the Louis Armstrong story. Hmm. Accomplished theater actor. Classically in New York City. trained. Amazing. Northern started his Broadway career in the same year and featured in Tigers at the Gates in 1968 and The Me Nobody Knows in 1970. He didn't give up his stage career when he landed his job in Sesame Street and performed in six productions of Broadway from 1968 to 1980. So Jesus, he was busy. doing double duty, like, talented, loved the arts and, and loved his work. 1971 is when Northern joined the Sesame Street cast. It was during the show's fourth season as he came on as David Robinson, the boyfriend of the character Maria who's a longtime mm -hmm. cast member of the show. Actor and fellow castmate Will Lee passed away in 1982, and after this, the series decided to make Northern's character the new owner of what was Will's character. Mr. Hooper's store is like a major... Huge. Yeah, that's like things I remember. I'll go into Mr. Hooper's store. Exactly. Northern was one of the very few human characters for 18 years. He appeared in 1,268 episodes. Oh, my God. Prolific. Absolutely. Doesn't and he. doing sh and doing yeah. Shakespeare on the side. Yeah. And in 1980 is when things start to go south. We're going to go to 1980 right after this break. Are you looking for a new podcast to add to your favorites list? Once Upon a Crime is a weekly scripted true crime podcast that tells the story behind the story of real life crime. I'm Esther, host of Once Upon a Crime. Each week, I bring you a new true crime story, meticulously researching each case to bring you details you won't hear anywhere else. Together, we'll seek to understand the why behind infamous crimes, as well as lesser known cases. Told in a storytelling style, I dig into a different true crime topic each month. Killer kids, deadly duos, mass murders, tragic deaths of music superstars are just some of the series covered on Once Upon a Crime. With over 200 episodes to date and new episodes released every Monday, You'll want to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Look for Once Upon a Crime and subscribe for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Greetings. I'm Andrew Carey, the host of Blood Moon Podcast. Blood Moon Podcast brings to life stories of the strange and sometimes terrifying. You will be immersed in paranormal accounts and tales augmented by sound effects and music. Listeners can submit their stories and have them be brought to life. You can summon Blood Moon Podcast on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other major podcast apps. Hi, hello, how are you? Hello. We're checking in. Deep breaths. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Or just some panicked ones, short, four <laughs> short ones through the nose, one long one through the mouth. I can never, I, I get anxious when people say, no, no, it's, it's two and hold and then out. And I was like, now I'm no. thinking about I'm counting numbers. Yeah, you're suffocating. And now I'm suffocating. Yourself. I'll just mm. do short, shallow breaths. Okay. Taking in the least amount of oxygen and I guess letting out the most carbon dioxide as possible. Yeah. Okay. That's very good. That's what I'm doing. That's the beauty of Ghost Town, though. You can do it however way you want to do it. Yeah. In fact, we sort of encourage we, it. <laughs> we do to our detriment, probably. Yeah. Ugh. So we want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting the show, letting people know about it, mm -hmm. spreading the good word. Yeah, the good gospel. Yes, yeah, spreading Planting the gospel. Planting the seeds. Yes, just far and wide. Ah. Uh, what a beautiful thing. It's a super bloom happening Going here. into different countries and different places and different continents that don't need ghost town. No. They need wells. <laughs> but you're like, well, I have some ghost town episodes. They're yeah. Like, we don't need them. And we want to say hello to our government. Absolutely. we're bootlickers for the ghost town we government. We got to be. The mayors in non-alphabetical order. <laughs> yeah. David Bull. Already, see, already, that's already alphabetical. <laughs> hello, David Bull. Ashley Matson. Hello. Now we're off. <laughs> Dara Rosenzweig. Hello. James Thomas Aquinas Harrington. <laughs> That's right. That's correct. I don't know. Inaccurate. Why not? Just like our research. Hello. And to one governor 
to destroy. No, not rule them all. To rule them all fairly, destroy. honestly. She's got her finger. It's right yeah. on the button. Yeah, it's on the button. Absolutely. But she's not going to push it. <laughs> no. Avian Noble. So if you want early access, bonus episodes, no chit chat. You no. want to cut out time is cut money shit, and you baby. have neither. Go to patreon.com slash ghost town pod. A bonus episode will be up within a day or two of you listening to this. I promise. I make that promise personally to you because that bony's on me. And here's something that you don't get if you get early access, a Apple podcast review. Hmm. Literally my favorite five <laughs> stars. This is from Autumn's Violet 97 in the US and A. You guys do such an amazing job and your check-ins add an extra flair that I haven't found in other podcasts. Everything about this podcast is awesome. Keep up the amazing work, guys. That's nice. great. Yeah. I love that. A little Thank extra you. Flair. I I love that. You thought you were flareless? I did. Uh, I like it when people appreciate our banter instead of wanting it to not exist. Yeah, or us not exist. <laughs> we also got an Instagram message from Kat Josell. Uh, she said some very complimentary things. Hey, guys, you two are really entertaining and have gotten me through many a home DIY project since early days of quarantine, so thank you. I had an idea about some potential content that might be of interest to you. With St. Patrick's Day coming up, yes, I thought it might be timely to cover some of the crazy, haunted shit that goes down in Ireland. I'm half Irish and I visited twice, but didn't know that Halloween had its origins there. Me either. Read on. And she gives us a little taste of the Irish hell caves. I can't wait to read up on this stuff and do some deep digging. And if we do an episode on that, that was us finding it independently. <laughs> Nothing to do with Kat. She gets no credit <laughs> uh -oh. whatsoever. Shots have been fired. Who are you going to believe? No, we want her to keep doing DIY projects to our podcast. That's true. Step down. What, what has she made us lately? Great question. <laughs> See? <laughs> Wow. A man Always on the defense. <laughs> A man with power. <laughs> well, let's go back to Sesame Street, 1980, Northern Calloway. Northern Calloway was arrested on September 19th, 1980 in Nashville, Tennessee. He had been at Mary Stagman's home, the marketing director of the Tennessee Performing Arts Center, after he performed there on the 13th of the same month. Something happened while he was there, not sure what exactly. Northern assaulted Mary with an iron and caused serious head and rib injuries. After that happened, he fled the scene and broke into two other homes, destroying some of their property while he was at it. Jeez. Northern didn't stop there. He proceeded to steal a first grader's backpack, break a windshield with a rock, and steal a bag of herbicide from an elderly Douglas Wright. He then spilled the herbicide on his body and began rolling on the ground and running around. Douglas tried to hold Northern at gunpoint, even fired a warning shot at him. He responded to the shot by diving to the ground and screaming that he had been shot before jumping back, washing his hands and face in Douglas's birdbath, then fled the scene. Witnesses at the time recall he was wearing nothing but a Superman t-shirt. Jesus Christ. Obviously, we're in 1980. He's in Sesame Street until 1989, so it's interesting to go back and you know watch some of his performances. You wouldn't know it, but what is there to know? And if this was today and Sesame Street was on and information flowed the way it does. Yeah. I, I don't know if that would be helpful to him, but probably would not be on Sesame Street. Yeah, I think after his, that. his time on Sesame Street would have ended a little bit earlier than 1989 if this information was out, especially considering the nature of it, the fact that a child was involved. Like, it just, you just want to know what the hell was happening to him, you know, what was going on, if there was any inclination that he had behavior like this in the past psychologically if he was on a substance or there's so many variables as to what happened i mean just like what a day god and mental health as a option in mm -hmm. 1980 probably wasn't great who wants mm -hmm. to admit to that or believe in that it's hard now so i imagine 1980 probably wasn't as accepted or thought like oh this is a great option yeah even though it in hindsight it was yeah Northern was arrested after being found hiding in a couple's garage. He was screaming, help, I'm David from Sesame Street, and they're trying to kill me. Mm. He was immediately taken to a mental hospital for an examination. This was all kept quiet from the public, and Northern was allowed to continue appearing on Sesame Street while he received help. So, That's you know, kind of great. I think, it, yeah, I think it is <laughs> great because it wasn't, it wasn't him being like, hey, listen, I'm a malicious person. Yeah. I just like to do bad. 
it was obviously something beyond his yeah he needed know. help he got it and he was able to continue working because in so many cases you stop working or you know you don't have a job anymore and it can get worse and i think once your circumstance snowballs and gets worse and worse it's hard to come back from that so it i know it's pretty nice that felt like he could concurrently get help and keep working northern's final years on sesame street were reportedly spotted with times of erratic behavior and deteriorating health he was said to have bitten the music coordinator danny epstein during an onset fight northern was also unable to participate in the filming of follow that bird since it took place in canada and his criminal record meant he wasn't allowed to enter the country mm. and that's why he wasn't featured in the film it's probably tough. You That's know, really everyone's tough. Going and yeah. It's a movie being That's part rough. of something that, that you help build. By 1987, the executive producer, Dulcie Singer, had become concerned about the viability of Northern's future with Sesame Street. This led to the show's writer slowly ending David and Maria's relationship in the storyline. In 1989, Northern Calloway was dismissed from Sesame Street after the biting incident. David was last seen on the 20th season finale that aired on May 12th, 1989. The 21st season started and David's absence was explained by saying that David had gone to live with his grandmother on a farm to look after her. It wasn't long after he was terminated from Sesame Street that Northern was placed into Stony Lodge Hospital, a mental institution that's located in Westchester County, New York. He was being treated for a bipolar disorder. On January 9, 1990, Northern and a staff member were involved in a serious altercation. He was transported to Phelps Memorial Hospital in North Tarrytown, but there was nothing anyone could do. At the age of 41, Northern Calloway was pronounced dead. His cause of death was listed as exhaustive psychosis. It is described as a controversial condition that is mainly given to those who die while in constraints in custody. Northern was buried at Ferncliff Cemetery. I think it's just a combination of a lot of things happening to your body at once and your mind at once and the restraint not being able to, I, I don't know if be able to kind of like move and expel some of that energy, whatever that is that obviously that nervous, anxious painful energy and you were strained and it just internally shuts you down unfortunately mm -hmm. so a, a really a really sad end and i if you were somebody who watched sesame street you didn't if if you're old like me awesome if you're super young great you have your whole life ahead of you <laughs> wonderful <laughs> you know but i i'd say you know if you want a really interesting lesson in, in culture and, and entertainment and where sesame street was like doing a lot of really great stuff and you want to check out northern calloways he's got songs he's there's just so many great clips with him. I mean, to be an actor and interact with a puppet, mm -hmm. you think like, oh, that's easier. No, that's got to be difficult. Like you yeah. have to make a connection with a puppet. And I really just learned to appreciate that. And now looking back, somebody, you know, involved in like acting and just doing the the easy stuff is hard, at least for somebody like me and probably for a lot of other people. You just got to give a lot of credit and, you know, celebrate, you know, this person's contribution for and to a lot of people's upbringing may you know if it's not you maybe it's somebody that's a, a parent or a grandparent maybe yeah. or or somebody who goes back and like likes the old likes the old episodes or somebody who's just into nostalgia uh i, I encourage you to check it out yeah that's that was beautiful yeah that's a beautiful epitaph although sesame street's still on for a great show i loved it and I, I dressed up as Oscar the Grouch once for my 38th birthday. And, and sort of right now, a little bit. <laughs> Angie's List is now Angie, your home for everything home. With Angie, you could cross your next project off your to-do list before this ad is over. Just tell us what you need, and we'll handle the rest. Sending a top pro to get it done. Or browse reviews, compare quotes from pros, and connect instantly. All for free. For everything from routine maintenance to a dream remodel. Because however you want your project done, we'll get it done. Download the app or go to Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com to get started. How long does it take to tackle a home project? With Angie, you could cross it off your list before this ad is over. Just tell us what you need. Indoor or outdoor, repair or redesign. And we handle the rest. Sending a top pro to get it done. You don't have to lift a finger, except to tap the screen or click the mouse. Plus, Angie is free to use. So bring us your next home project and we'll bring it home. Download the app or go to Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com to get started. 
Angie's List is now Angie, your home for everything home. And as any homeowner knows, caring for the place where you live can take, well, a lot of care. Luckily, Angie doesn't have just 20 plus years of home service experience. They've combined it with new tools to simplify how we tackle home care. Just bring them to your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie will handle the rest from start to finish or let you compare quotes from local pros and professionals and connect instantly, which means you can cross things off your to-do list in just a few taps. And when you book and pay through Angie, you will get their happiness guarantee, covering your project up to the full purchase price. So whether it's routine maintenance or a dream remodel, Angie makes it easy to get the job done. Let's start the year and your next project off right. Download the Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That is A-N-G-I dot com. 